Hello, everyone. Welcome to Vanish Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Castanis. This is episode 114, season five, and today's date is March 22nd, 2022. And it's also my first anniversary show. Imagine that. It was, I started this a year ago, and I'm still nervous, but I'm still having a lot of fun. But thank you for joining me today. Uh, today, I will talk about... Uh, how I reached this point of, uh, of doing the show for one year. Also, today's topic topic is Cuddly Dudley. He's a very famous uh, TV animal in Chicago. I've been teasing about this uh, yesterday on my social media accounts. Uh, so I sort of threw a red herring. A lot of people thought it was Garfield Goose, but it's not him. So I will do a podcast about him. Uh, later this year. But today we'll talk about, uh, I will, excuse me, I will talk about uh, Cuddly Dudley and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. And I will talk about my memories of watching him on television. Okay. And right now the program will go into a commercial break. This program is brought to you by Bouchel uh, Carpet and Rug Cleaning. And I aired this commercial on my first episode uh, last year. That was one of the first commercials. So I'm going to replay it again because it's so famous and it's famous for its phone number. So here is a commercial from 1979, Bouchelle Rug, Rug and Carpet Clean. Here we go. During Bouchelle's annual two-for-one cleaning sale, you get all your vital household cleaning done practically for half the regular low Bouchelle price. Get two-for-one savings on drapery cleaning and furniture cleaning by calling Bouchelle now. Get two rugs clean for the price of one in Bouchelle's modern cleaning plant. Get two rooms of tack-down carpeting clean for the price of one and save up to 50%. Remember, this offer is limited and may be withdrawn at any time. So call Bouchelle now at Hudson 32700. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial for Bouchel, uh, that famous telephone number, Hudson 32700. I can't do it. I'm not a baritone. I can't sing well. So that's famous. Um, some people, a couple of people asked me, no, not asked me. They commented on Bouchel Rugs. Uh, I posted something a long time ago on Van Chicago Land. They asked me who was the singer of that? Who sang that jingle? Uh, according to some sources, uh, someone said it was uh, it was an entertainer called Will Stark or Win Stark or something. Will Stark. I, I guess that's his name. I don't know. He was uh, he entertained uh, in Chicago. He had I think he had his own TV show in the fifties, and uh, I don't know much about him, but. Uh, I like to do a show about him because I, I did something, a video about uh, children's television shows in Chicago about a couple of years ago. I p- compile a lot of photos, uh, famous uh, local TV celebrities like uh, Ned Lock, Mary Hartline, um, of course, uh, Ray Rayner, and uh, back in the early days of of uh, television in Chicago. So it could have been him. Another rumor was um, the guy who uh, saying, you're, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. I think it's, uh, his name is Thurl. I don't know his last name. But, yeah, I don't, you know, who did the voice of Tony the Tiger? I don't think it was him. I don't think so. It sounded like him. Not true. Uh, Bouchelle Ruggs, believe it or not, is still in business. You know, they don't advertise much on television. This You've seen this in the 70s, the 80s. Practically every day, I think, on Channel 9 and Channel 32, during the movies they aired, you know, when they have a movie break. Uh, so any anyone would still... They remember the phone number rather than the commercial or the name of the company. So it's kind of funny, and uh, it's so endearing. It really is. Okay. Right now, today's program, I will talk about uh, Cuddly Dudley, you know, and uh, but first off, I'm going to talk about uh, my podcast, how it got started. Um, one day I was just thinking, you know, uh, podcasts were a, ra- a rage, still are, you know, they're still very popular. 
lot of celebrities have them. They talk about politics, sports, um, movies, comic books, television. There's all kinds. You can find them on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Even mine is there, Google Podcasts, or they have them on YouTube. And uh, around the, I was thinking of doing one in 2019. I was thinking of starting one, but uh, that I I pulled the I pulled the brakes on that because I got diagnosed with prostate cancer in December, so I didn't want to do that while I'm you know when I'm sick. And, but I took a course at a local college, how to do a podcast, and I'm glad I did. There were two courses, and that helped a bit. And that was in, yeah, it was in 2019, like in the summer. So I was going to do one in 2020, but uh, as I said before, you know, I had I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I had an operation. Uh, they removed it, and then I had radiation, and I'm recovering. And uh, also that year was terrible. There was too much nonsense going on uh politics rioting awful awful year you know and uh when i had the operation in april which is uh, next coming up two years uh it was a very scary time for me because uh i wasn't much scared of the operation much it was because that was a that was during the pandemic and it was in full force and it was frightening. And uh, it was so, I was so nervous being outside. And then when I went to the hospital, um, I had no visitors. They would not allow anybody, not even my mother, my brother. I wanted my priest to come from my church. You know, he didn't come. He couldn't. So luckily I had a, a chaplain. There was a chaplain in the, the hospital. And I said, yes, please do that. You know, he came over. Even though I'm Greek Orthodox, but he was Catholic, so that, that doesn't matter. And, you know, I was very blessed and very happy. So then, uh, as I recovered during the year in 2020, uh, then I started to think, well, I'm getting a little better. Why don't I start the podcast? So I waited till 2021, and uh, so I decided to do it in March, and that was one year ago this month. I uh, started getting go, you know, just get the ball rolling, you know. And I had to think of a title, Van Chicagoland Stories, part of Van Chicagoland, the Facebook page. Also, uh, my, I remember my first episode, I was so nervous. It was nothing fancy. I just had a little music, introduced myself, what I'm going to talk about, you know, and uh, it went okay, but I did, it was, didn't become popular at first, but then uh, it took time. And it's uh, so far, I have about over 40,000 plays, which is nice. And uh, I didn't want to do anything fancy, no fancy music, you know, side effects, uh, not side effects, uh, sound effects, excuse me. I wanted to do that, but, uh, you know, I want to treat this podcast as a like an old ra fashioned radio show. You know, like you, you listen to Jack Benny or uh, Fred Allen or burns and allen and all that those uh wonderful performers just like a regular ra radio show just like on those who are the days they broadcast on saturdays at one o'clock you know, wonderful show i want to do it like simple very simple straightforward just me okay and uh so i'm having a good time i'm enjoying it i'm still nervous you know i ramble i go uh oh, huh oh, oh. And, uh, you know, some people have written reviews about it. Some some people like it. Some people, eh, <laughs> needs a little work. Personally, uh, to me, I sound very strange when I listen to myself. Yeah, I mean, it sounds strange on my answering machine on the phone. But uh, lot, so most people say, you you sound fine. You sound natural. You sound, you're very educational. You know, we learn a lot of things from you. You know, you're just not, you're not a phony. You're just uh, straightforward, honest, which is nice. It really is. Uh, I'm very pleased. Okay. So I'm still having a good time with this. And, uh, you know, if you have any comments, please comment, <laughs> you know, and let me know on my uh, social media accounts or on the podcast. You know, I will continue to do this. I really did. I enjoy doing this show. I really do. Okay.
Uh, that's enough for me. That's enough about me. So I'm going to talk about Cuddly Dudley and uh, I'm talking about my memories and the history of them. But right now we're going to go into a commercial break. And this program, again, is brought to you by Starbeat presents What's Happening. And here's a commercial from 1981. If I play this commercial, you would remember it from this will remember from my teenage years. So here's the commercial. And here we go. Starbeat presents what's happening. Through April 19th, put down the Ritz on Butterfield Road, one mile east of Highland Avenue, Oak Brook, features top live entertainment with never a cover. Jamet, Monday through Thursday, Windjammer, Friday and Saturday, at the grand opening of In and Around, 10235 West Grand Avenue, Franklin Park. The Saints and Sinners in Willow Springs features a 10-man male dancer extravaganza Wednesday, plus a special Easter party Saturday. Classic Rock with Red Muldoon and Air Guitar Competition Thursdays at Eric the Red, 3300 West 111th Street, Chicago. A $2 million unbelievable intergalactic robot show at Tobias, 6020 West Belmont, Chicago, Wednesday, April 22nd. The Vineyard, 75th and Cast Darien presents The Outside Chance, plus Wednesday's Chicken and Ribs, All You Can Eat, $4.95. The Ship's Rail Turtle Trot at 154th and Calumet Expressway into Dalton Lodge with $250 weekly cash prize Mondays. This is Steve Cronin. For more what's happening information, call the Starbeat Dictaphone at 948-8800. Okay, everyone, I am back. Boy, that was fun. Remember that commercial? Uh, I used to listen to this on the radio, uh, like WLS, AM or FM, WABT, WCKG, uh, WFYR, all the wonderful radio stations uh, that I grew up with in the 70s and 80s. Also, they showed this on television. And, uh, you know, people who lived in the Chicagoland area, or still do, remember this very well. You know, they show all the clubs and uh, what's uh, the, like, for example, like local bands playing. Uh, one that stood out, one club that stood up was the Prime Intender. I went there once. It was located at 63rd Street in Harlem, west of that. Uh, I, yeah, like I said before, I went to a club once and that was like in the early 80s. And that was a fun place. It really does. And uh, unfortunately, it's gone. They tore it down. <laughs> You know, they uh, they changed uh, names, venues, you know, but uh, it, was a, it was a good place. Yeah. Great place to hang out with your friends, you know, listen to music, dancing. I'm not much of a dancer. You know, thank God. Even Greek dancing, I just, I just stick a roux on that. <laughs> I'm just bad. Okay. Right now we're going to talk about the subject in hand, and that is Cuddly Dudley. Last year, I wrote an article on my blog, BanishChicagoLand.blog, in January 20th, I think. No, excuse me, January 10th, 2021. And it was titled, Chicago's Famous Toy Stuffed Animal. But of course, it's Cuddly Dudley. I didn't write a big story on it, just a little bit. And uh, as you know, he was, uh, he was a stuffed cocker spaniel. He really was. And uh, he was used for a promotional gimmick for the Chicago Tribune. It was for a sales item. So when you subscribe to the Chicago Tribune, you would get the, receive the doll. And uh, that's a, you know what? It worked like a charm. It, it, it became very popular. Everyone wanted it. It was a tremendous success. And uh, you received it for free, I believe. And it lasted all during the 60s. It really was. And uh, he came with a cardboard doghouse, automobile or locomotive, or a super jet. So uh, whatever is available. And uh, you had to assemble it yourself when it arrived at your house. You know, they were very, it was, the colors were eye-catching. It was beautiful like that. And uh, also it was a perfect Christmas gift for a lot of children in Chicago. And, you know, I always wanted one because when I watched them on TV, I always wanted a doll. But I, when I was, but then again, when I was younger, I didn't know they did this. Uh, later on, I, that they did the promotional thing for Chicago Tribune. I even asked my mom, 
you know, can you get me one? And uh, well, you know, at the time, my parents never read the newspaper. They just watched the news on TV because uh, they didn't read English very well. You know, my fa especially my father, I, all he could read was a stock market. That's about it. <laughs> And uh, but later on, we did subscribe to the Tribune, I think, like when I started going to high school. And uh, my memories of watching Cuddly Dudley was on the Ray Raider show, and it was on every morning, Monday through Friday, on WGN TV Channel 9. I used to watch the show before I went to school, you know, and then uh, I hated because the school bus came to take us to school, and I wanted to watch more, but you know, one time, a couple of times, my mother yelled at me, you know, to get, you know, get off my butt and race to the school bus because you're going to miss it. You know, but back then my mom didn't drive, so we had to find another way for me to get there. Luckily, it did not happen. So, but uh, most of the time I did catch Cuddly Dudley on Ray Rayner. And uh, the thing was, uh, Ray Rayner would visit him. And uh, the, it was a segment lasted about almost like near the end of the show, it was like 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, Ray Rayner would sing the Cuddly Dudley song. And it, it was the music, the music was from a song. It was the Whistler and his dog. And it was written by Arthur Pryor. That's his name. What, what, as soon as he's finished singing the song, he went to and approached the doghouse. He rang his doorbell. <laughs> you ever heard of a doghouse had a, had a doorbell installed? I did. And uh, Cuddly answered. He said, hello to Ray with a deep voice like that. And uh, it was, it was, so they would, uh, people, kids would write in letters and then uh, mostly jokes. And they were corny jokes. And uh, Ray Manor would read a joke or a letter to Cuddly. Cuddly would just uh, laugh <laughs> like that. It's so funny. The voice of Cuddly Dudley was Roy Brown was Cookie the Cook on Bozo Circus. He created him. And uh, so here, this, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. I'm going to read the, the lyrics of the song. You know, I'm not going to sing it. I'll try. But uh, it goes like this. We're off to Cuddly Dudley's house. He's, he's cute as it can be. With his fur of gold and his nose so called, he's cuddly as can be. He's got riddles and jokes. And the fun that he pokes is never aimed at me. Here's the place that he lives, and the name that he gives is Cuddly. That's the lyrics, you know. And you can, uh, they, they broadcast the specials, you know, Bozo, Gar, and Ray every year around Christmas time. So they do show a segment of Cuddly Dudley at Ray Rayner. So he does sing that song. Also, a lot of people don't remember that he had a girlfriend, uh, Cuddly Dudley. His, her name was Clarice. They did make a stuffed animal about Clarice and that was very rare they did make but a lot of people forgot that you know and uh those dolls especially Cuddly Dudley are like I said they're very rare um I've seen them on eBay for sale they cost like maybe three hundred dollars five hundred dollars in mint condition also with included with the box or on the or they're unassembled they're much higher I always want one but that's a little kind of rich for my blood. I, I like to own one. I really do. Also, there were two stories published in the Chicago Tribune about Cuddly Dudley that featured him. That was in 1967, 1968. Uh, the first one was called How Cuddly Dudley Saved the Runaway Tr Christmas Train. And the other one was How Cuddly Dudley Rescued Santa Claus. And they were very popular, you know, it was like a serial, it's like a soap opera. And uh, you could find them if you go to Chicago Tribune archives by the date, around Christmas time, you could read them. And uh, right now, the cuddly, the puppet of Cuddly Dunn and his dog guys are part of the collection of the Museum Broadcast of Communications in Chicago. So you go downtown, if you want to visit the museum, he is there on display, his house and the doll. You know, I always wanted to own one, like I said before, but uh, no, we'll see about that. And uh, you, you know, he's such a, he was such an endearing character, and 
you know, if you live in Chicago, you know who he was, of course. And, uh, you know, and also he did not also appear on Ray Rayner. Later on, he appeared on uh, Bozo Circus, which turned into the Bozo Show in the when Ray Rayner went off the air. And Bozo, and no, excuse me, and then it turned into Bozo Show. It moved from noon to seven o'clock in the morning. I think it was seven. I don't know. I forgot. Seven thirty or like that. It took over Ray Rayner's uh, show, his slot. And Cuddly Dudley was there. And he entered and he talked with Bozo and Cookie and Frazier Thomas. You know, Mr. Ned, Mr. Ned, the ringmaster Ned left in 76. So I don't, he, I don't think he ever talked with them. That would have been interesting. And then he was there and there for a few years also because Garfield Goose and all the characters also migrated to Bozo's, the Bozo show when Garfield Goose and friends ended. So all the puppets were there. That was fun. I remember see, watching them in early in the morning uh, during the 80s, but, you know, I was going to school. Uh, I was working. I didn't have time, you know, or I got older, so I didn't catch that. And uh, so a lot of people are still excited, and hopefully you would enjoy this show. You really would enjoy uh, listening about my memories about Cuddly Dudley. Okay. So that'll be all for this episode. I know it's kind of short. Um, I discussed the uh, the big, you know, the beginnings of the, my podcast, Ben Chicago with Stories, and I will continue to do so. Uh, there's uh, limitless topics about sh- in Chicago that uh, things that are gone. Believe me, there are businesses, restaurants, bakeries, bookstores. T- uh, um, local celebrities, banks, you name it. There, there, there's so many, a lot of businesses, a lot of things that are gone in Chicago. And I could talk about that. Okay. So this is P. Castanis. I'm your host of Banish Conrad Stories. And uh, also talk about Cuddly Dudley. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so I enjoy talking about him. He's be- he's, he was beautiful. I love this. Okay. So, um, Next program will be this weekend. I'll see what I'll discuss. And it should be a lot of fun. Okay. Thank you for joining me. And uh, everyone have a good day. And here is Cuddly Dudley's friend, Ray Rayner's, with his traveling music saying bye-bye for now. And here's bye-bye for me. So long, everyone. Take care. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye.